On today's Winning Cures Everything, so many people thought I was nuts. They thought realignment was done. But as Lee Corso would say, not so fast, my friends. Here's the questions. Is the Pac-12 dead? Is the Big Ten going to expand right now? How many schools are joining Big 12 expansion? What's happening between the ACC and Florida State? Look, we got a lot to talk about on today's show. Uh, so why don't we just go on and get into it? Football. I've been watching it for 40 years. Are you kidding me? You're listening to Winning Cures Everything. Game day, baby. Wake up or get out. Here's your host. A confident young man. A superb athlete. Gary Seegers. Welcome in. It is Thursday, August the 3rd. And, uh, and I'm your host, Gary Seegers. You can follow me on Twitter at GaryWCE. This is Winning Cures Everything, where we talk college football news, rumors, and more all year round. I do have the AAC preview coming tomorrow. You guys can stop asking. I promise I'm going to get it out. Uh, be on the lookout for it. It's going to be here on Friday. Uh, I'm going to try and get a few more done while I'm in Vegas next week, which I'm going to talk about more in just a bit. Uh, first, I wanted to start off happy first day of kindergarten for my five-year-old and the first day of class for my wife, of course, the teacher. Uh, the boy told me he was scared of going to kindergarten. But man, he went to pre-K uh, at the same school that my wife has taught at basically his entire life. He's already known his kindergarten teacher. So when I walked into class this morning, like he already knew some of the other kids. He walked in that classroom like he owned the joint. So it's a pretty good example of how sometimes our thoughts and, and our worries are way worse than whatever thing we're actually walking into. So, you know, take that for what it's worth. Uh, if you are not already subscribed to this channel, please go ahead and do so. Like the video for me, jump in the comments, tell me what you think about today's topics. And while we're at it, make sure to subscribe to the BetUS College Football Show. We got shows every Wednesday up until the week uh, leading up to week one. Uh, and that's when we're going to start doing every Tuesday and Wednesday live at 1 p.m. Eastern time. So make sure you are subscribed over there. Now, I mentioned Las Vegas earlier. If you are going to be in Vegas next week, I will be at Bet Bash Tuesday, August 8th through the 11th. So if you're going to be in attendance, come on out, say hello, reach out to me on Twitter. Uh, we'll make sure to meet up while we're out there. I'm looking forward to catching up with Matt Metcalf, uh, Jeffrey Benson at Circa, Bud Elliott from 247, uh, Tim Murray. From Vison, a whole lot more, a whole lot of guys, uh, the, the bunch from Spank Odds and whatnot, uh, Spanky himself, uh, very, very excited to be going out there. All right, let's write our times down because we're going to have to put together uh, a list, right? We, we got multiple things to talk about. The first one, the Pac-12 is on life support. This afternoon, or I guess evening, 9 p.m. Eastern time, the Arizona and Arizona Board of Regents have a meeting scheduled, uh, presumably to vote on whether or not to leave the Pac-12. Now, if you've not been paying attention, here's the backstory, right? Colorado left last Thursday. You can go watch the video where I laid out five potential scenarios for what could end up happening. Uh, but the Pac-12 loses Colorado. This could have been fixed by the presidents agreeing to expand immediately and offering my guess would have been SMU. I don't think they could get any Mountain West schools based on the buyout numbers. But props to the presidents. They told Klyovkov that they were not going to approve expansion until they saw media rights numbers. And whoo, boy, on Wednesday, they were finally shown the numbers on, on what a media deal could look like, and it was not good. I mean, the offer was awful. The presidents that have spoken openly talked about how not only money was important, but also visibility, as in being on network television, Fox, ABC, ESPN, etc., having games available for the rest of the country to be able to see the schools. That level of advertising is invaluable because people that normally would not give a rip would tune in, and your school's logo was going to be right in their face for however long they watch that game. The media rights still that was brought up in that meeting was almost exclusively streaming with Apple+. Plus. It was somewhere around $20 million per school, it included a subscription aspect, as in they could potentially make as much as the Big 12, or maybe more, if they hit certain escalators in the contract. Uh, Apple Plus or Apple TV or whatever, it, they would include a Pac-12 network package. So not only would you be paying for Apple Plus, whatever that fee may be, but then you have to pay the subscription package as well. Now, there's also the talk that Apple could potentially sublicense some games over to ESPN or Fox, Potentially. 
like no guarantee from what I understand, but maybe that helps alleviate some linear reservations. Probably not. And the money issue, you know, obviously that's almost $12 million less per school than the Big 12 makes. Well, the contract escalators basically mean once you hit a certain number of subscriptions, you make more money. So while they started around $20 million per school, there's, you know, the opportunity to make way, way more, which is great other than the fact that, you know, the West Coast doesn't typically give a rip about watching sports on TV. The fan bases for the the remaining Pac-12 schools are not huge. There's a, a small segment of each school's fans that are what we would consider diehards, right? They will absolutely get the subscription package. I mean, it, of course, depending on how much it is. I mean, if they're charging 100 bucks a pop, you're probably not going to do that. But you're not going to get the casual fans. It, seriously, it, you've seen the stadiums in like Palo Alto, Berkeley, et cetera, right? Utah and Oregon are always full. Washington fans are certainly having fun right now, uh, but it's not a full house week in and week out at these Pac-12 schools. Not to mention, the Pac-12 already bought this whole used car bit before. Larry Scott sold the league on this whole thing with the Pac-12 networks back in the 2010s. I mean, they spent the money and created their own network. They, they believed that if we have our own rights, our own product, we can sell it ourselves. But they had no push behind it. They couldn't get uh, very many cable providers at all to carry it. No carriage feeds means no profit, right? ESPN launched the SEC network in 2014 to 90 million homes. Now, it's not near that number now. I mean, cord cutting has picked up steam. But the Pac-12 network is in less than 15 million homes right now. Why on earth would presidents take the same risk that backfired on them before? Like, it doesn't make a ton of sense, right? If it were that easy, don't you think that some of these smaller conferences would take that route as opposed to, you know, we'll take a smaller amount of money so that we can be seen on ESPN and ABC and CBS. The Mountain West has a few CBS games a year. And the AAC has a few ABC games a year. They do it for the visibility, right? You're not just trying to make money for your your school or your team. You are attempting to showcase your university. Sports is the front porch for universities. That's the advertising. So now, Brett McMurphy over at the Action Network, uh, that primary media rights deal with Apple for the Pac-12, that expires at the end of the week. He, he just reported that. So the presidents have until tomorrow night, Friday night, to sign off on that, or it's going the way of the dodo. McMurphy's tweet states that the proposal, quote, is in low 20 million figure per school annually, but can fluctuate or increase based on membership size and subscription incentives, sources said. So now, the Board of Regents for Arizona and Arizona State are having a meeting this evening to presumably vote on whether or not to leave the Pac-12 and join the Big 12. The Big 12 reportedly reportedly has a board meeting uh, scheduled for later this evening as well. There's no Pac-12 meeting scheduled to accept the deal or not right now. Obviously, we'll see. Utah, the other four-corner school that... Uh, it gets involved in these rumors. They don't want to join the Big 12 because of BYU, supposedly. But if the Arizona schools leave, they may not have much choice. Like, if the two Arizona schools leave, that makes seven Pac-12 schools. If Utah leaves, that makes six. It, so, let's go on and move a little further up the West Coast. Uh, that leaves Stanford, Cal, Oregon, Oregon State, Washington, and Washington State. All right? Now, carrying on, is the Big Ten going to expand with Pac-12 schools right now? Dan Wetzel broke that story yesterday uh, that, you know, the Big Ten is looking at expansion to 18 or potentially 20 teams uh, by bringing on Oregon and Washington and perhaps Stanford and California. Now, he's got a full story over at Yahoo Sports, but the tweet read like this. Uh, a group of Big Ten presidents have begun exploratory discussions on expansion in light of Pac-12 uncertainty, industry sources told Yahoo Sports. Focus is on possibly adding Oregon and Washington to move to 18 members or Cal and Stanford to move to 20 members. But that was on Wednesday. Today, he tweeted just a little bit ago, the Big Ten will wait to see what happens with the Pac-12, all eyes on Arizona. However, if the Big Ten chooses to expand, the focus is now on adding just two teams, Oregon and Washington, Industry sources told Yahoo Sports. 
that says to me that the TV networks did not want to pay for Cal and Stanford, and they went ahead and let them know. It, either way, a lot of this hinges on on whether or not the four corner schools join the Big 12 because the Big 10 doesn't want to be the ones to put the deciding bullet into the 100-plus-year-old conference. I mean, it's the alliance my ass, right? Uh, it is comical because, you know, when you look at it, it wasn't the Big 12 that killed the Pac-12 by taking Colorado. Even if they take the four schools, it's not the Big 12. It was the Big 10 taking the two most valuable properties on the West Coast to help out their own TV deal, which left no room for the Pac-12 in media negotiations. The money dried up. It all went to the SEC and the Big Ten. Then the Big 12 made the smartest possible move, and we've talked about that on this show multiple times this year, uh, but they jumped ahead of the Pac-12, who wanted to go to open market for some reason. It just makes no sense. Uh, George Klyovkov overvalued his conference, period. So, Big Ten expansion. How does this make sense? Normally, it takes a while to vet schools, get everybody together, etc. Here's the deal. The Big Ten did their homework early. Brett McMurphy tweeted out, friendly reminder, Big Ten cleared and vetted Oregon and Washington as Big Ten members if it makes financial sense, Action Network reported last year. Last August, Oregon and Big Ten met in Chicago. Washington and Big Ten met in New York. They are set to go if Big Ten and network partners figure out money. Now, Washington now has a Board of Regents meeting scheduled for 12 p.m. Eastern time tonight, so read into that what you will. I haven't seen anything about Oregon yet. Obviously, we'll see. But Oregon and Washington would likely come in at a discounted rate, likely half shares, which is still likely more than what the Big 12 contract is going to offer. Uh, same for Stanford and Cal, who would, in my opinion, definitely just be added to appease the academics in the bunch, along with being the two that join the uh, two you know, provide the L's. Right? But Elliot has explained this on, on the Cover 3 podcast before. Somebody got to take the L's, right? If you've got Ohio State, Michigan, Penn State, uh, USC, Oregon, Washington, like all in this same conference, who is taking the losses? That's what Stanford and Cal would be there for. Anyway, now would Fox, NBC, and CBS be willing to pay those shares? Like, the only school that's named in the Big Ten contract uh, that could command a full share would be Notre Dame, who still doesn't have their rights still done with NBC or, or whomever is willing to pony up. But maybe, maybe they wouldn't be, right? Maybe Fox, NBC, and CBS have all said, whoa, we've put enough money on the table. We don't, we don't want to pay for this right now. Well, Kevin Warren, when the deal was announced, he said in an interview that he had not ruled out ESPN getting a portion of the Big Ten deal. It, it didn't make a lot of sense at the time because obviously ESPN was not included in that, and everybody made a big deal about the fact that, oh, you're not going to have Big Ten basketball on ESPN for the first time in forever. The Big Ten basketball coaches were correctly upset about this because ESPN is the home of college basketball. But if you get Oregon and Washington – especially, you know, with Stanford and Cal to pair with USC and UCLA, there's a late-night football window that ESPN might be willing to pay for. Now, at the same time, ESPN might be fine with just getting BYU, Colorado, the Arizona schools, maybe Utah to shoulder the brunt of that late-night uh, time slot. Now, of course, there's also the potential to bring in somebody else, Amazon or give NBC some more exclusivity on Peacock. The point is, there are potential bidders that could be looking to get another piece of the Big Ten pie. Potentially, I mean, Fox could decide to just pay for it themselves. It gives them more good inventory for FS1, who, I mean, just this week became the most carried sports network over ESPN for the first time in history. And that's got a lot to do with the price. FS1 demands, what, north of a dollar per subscriber? It was 99 cents back in 2015, so, I mean, we'll call it $1.25 a month. Uh, in 71 million homes, that's over a billion dollars like just over a billion dollars. Uh, while they've got other things to pay for, Fox could likely afford another $200 million a year. We'd say they get $50 million bucks each, or, or less than that, right? Maybe $180 million, somewhere around there. Uh, because games with USC, UCLA, Oregon, and Washington versus any of the other Big Ten schools is likely going to be able to charge more for advertising than they used to get with just the Pac-12. Now, if they take all four schools, that puts them at 20 now, it's kind of hard to move past that for a little while. Uh, I expect them to eventually get to 24. But if you only take 18, 
that leaves a couple of spots available in case an unexpected team pops up, like, for example, Notre Dame, or potentially a school from the ACC. So let's go ahead and write that time down, because now we're moving into this. What is happening with the ACC in Florida State? Florida State Board of Trustees President Peter Collins went on with War Chant, uh, which is the on three fan site for Seminoles fans, uh, and basically spelled out that if it doesn't make sense for Florida State uh, to stay in the ACC, or I guess it, it doesn't, not if it doesn't, it really doesn't, uh, to stay in the ACC given the current revenue distribution from the conference. So let's, let's go ahead and get this part out of the way, right? The ACC presidents agreed to the current deal with ESPN unanimously back in 2016 because they wanted their own TV network, that just like the SEC and the Big Ten had. Former Commissioner John Swafford and the university presidents thought they had set themselves up with security for the long haul. They signed a 20-year rights agreement in July 2016. Now, let's look over some numbers. By November of 2016, ESPN had lost 3 million subscribers in a year. Uh, that dropped them down to 89 million subscribers heading into 2017. The ACC Network launched in 2019, and by the end of 2020, ESPN had only 76 million subscribers. It's quite the drop. So the ACC signed a deal in 2016, even though cable viewership had already been declining for several years, based on the fact that they assumed carriage rates would continue to be great for something like the ACC Network. They're not pulling in nearly as much money for that channel as they assumed that they would. So Peter Collins, president of the uh, the Board of Trustees, told Warchant that they could not stay in the ACC long term if they wish to compete at a national level. And if my memory's right, he told them that Florida State is fourth in the country in investments into their fo uh, football program nationally. Like, not from TV revenue, but from donors trying to make sure the football program is staying at you know, a competitive level nationally. But even with the amount of investments, they can't make up that $30 million gap annually from what the Big Ten and the SEC are going to bring in from TV networks against what the ACC is going to bring in. He went on to say that, you know, the so-called ironclad grant of rights that ties them to the ACC through 2036, that that won't be the thing that keeps them from leaving, or leaving the conference. Now, of course, in my head, I'm wondering, well, if, if it's not that, then... What is keeping you from leaving? And I, I don't have a good answer for that. Uh, the cutoff date to announce that you intend to compete in another conference next season is August 15th. So we, we've got a deadline that's just under two weeks now. There was a publicly streamed Board of Trustees meeting at Florida State on Wednesday where there were more statements made about leaving the ACC. Right, Former FSU player, current board member Drew Weatherford, he said, if it's, or he said it's not a matter of time. I'm going to get this right. It's not a matter of if we leave the ACC, but how and when we leave. Board member Justin Roth said, a solution under current ACC TV deal is very unlikely, leads us to what's next. The alternative for us staying in this conference for the next 13 years is death by a thousand cuts. Waiting is not the answer. He also said Florida State needs an exit plan in the next 12 months. So maybe Florida State gets ready to leave for 2025, right? Things are getting serious in Tallahassee. You don't come out and say this stuff publicly unless you already have an idea of what you're going to do and how you're going to do it, right? I mean, this is publicly admitting that the school is in an inferior conference. Something like that can really hurt recruiting going forward. And that's the lifeblood of a program like, like Florida State. So as for how they're going to get out of the grant of rights, I got no idea. I haven't seen anybody else that has a clue either. Like, unless Florida State has got somebody like the Saudis coming in to buy them out of this ACC deal and, and has some really good lawyers that can get them the rights to their home games, this does not make sense to me. The ACC and, and then, I guess by proxy, ESPN, owns the media rights to all of Florida State's home games through 2036. I mean, that's how the deal works. That's the grant of rights. So, moving back over to the Big Ten. If Florida State finds a way to do this, Maybe not in the next two weeks, but in the next year. Wednesday, there was discussion of them potentially adding not only Oregon and Washington, but also Stanford and Cal. Today, Stanford and Cal are out. Is there anything to the idea that Florida State could leave the ACC in the next two weeks or, or the next year? If Florida State is the 19th member of the Big Ten, wouldn't it make sense for there to be a 20th? 
right? Notre Dame's TV contract with NBC is up after 2024. They're attempting to get around $65 million for their television rights. NBC has been their partner since 1991. NBC is now in bed with the Big Ten. Does NBC or CBS or Fox just tell them, eh, we're good, but we'll pay you more if you join the Big Ten? Like ESPN is not in any position to be able to offer Notre Dame the money it would take to keep them away from Fox, right? So let's say Oregon and Washington join the Big Ten in 2024. Why bring in Cal and Stanford when you can expand to 20 with bigger brands maybe the next year, right? Notre Dame and Florida State. That's a match made in gold, right? This whole thing is going to get interesting. I can't wait to watch how this absolute cluster plays out. Uh, the SEC, in the meantime, I mean, they, they're tied to ESPN. Who doesn't have any money? So they're just going to sit back and watch for a while. They're going to enjoy Oklahoma and Texas coming in their conference next season. It's going to be a good time, I would imagine. Uh, but ESPN did not even want to fork up for, for them to play nine conference games as opposed to eight. I don't anticipate they're going to, to move past that uh, next year either. Uh, why give something away for free uh, when you can eventually get paid for it, right? All right. I was going to dive into the Iowa gambling situation, the whole Hunter Deckers, how he appears done at Iowa State, uh, at least for this season. Uh, but I think we're good on that. We, we've gone over 20 minutes. If, if you're a student athlete, just don't gamble on sports, period. It doesn't make any sense for you. If you're a parent of a child that is under 21, do not set up an account at a sports book for your kids. Those apps know where you are at all times, so they know who is putting in the bets. I mean, that integrity commission is no joke. They will find you. All right, let's go and wrap this thing up. Let's, let's go and wrap up today's show. Uh, reminder, I will have the AAC preview out tomorrow, I promise. I appreciate you guys for tuning in and, and for being patient with me, right? I mean, remember, this is a one-man show. I research, I film, I edit, I create the thumbnails, I write the description. Everything on this show is me. It's a lot of fun, but like I said last week, there are times when life does get in the way. The more that you guys watch, the more that you subscribe to the channel, the more opportunities that I can hire a team to help do all this stuff, which is the goal one day, right? So, of course, like the video, subscribe to the channel, share it out with your friends, tell tell your buddies about it, subscribe to the podcast and, and the YouTube, uh, and toss in your comments on the YouTube. Like, I want to hear your thoughts about all this. This is absolutely nuts. Uh, subscribe to the Bet U.S. College Football Show while you're at it. We did team previews this week. Uh, we got three early preview shows for games uh, that are happening early in the season that all happened before that. So make sure and check those out as well. Uh, if there's anything you want me to talk about on the show, you can hit me up on Twitter at GaryWCE or through email, Gary at winningcureseverything.com. All right, let's go ahead and wrap it up. Take care of yourself. Take care of each other. God bless college football. And by God, I hope all of your tickets cash this week. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and follow me on Twitter, at GaryWCE. If you want to toss in a question, you can email me, Gary, at winningcureseverything.com. Make sure and hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you next time.